Hello, my lovelies. Today, I'm going to read to you guys chapter 14 from the Holt Physics textbook, and together we are going to be solving our guided reading questions. So let's get down to it. This is from pages 488 to 493. This is page 488. When light passed through a red filter is combined with green light produced with a green filter, a patch of yellow light appears. If this yellow light is combined with blue light, the resulting light will be colorless or white, as shown in figure 18. Because yellow is a color added to the primary additive, color blue, to produce white light, yellow is called the complementary color of blue. Two primary colors combine to produce the complement of third primary color, as indicated in table 6. One application of additive primary color is the use of certain chemical compounds to give a co color to glass. Iron compounds give glass a green color, or manganese compounds give glass a magenta or reddish blue color. Green and magenta are complementary colors, so the right proportion of these compounds produces an equal combination of green and magenta light, and the resulting glass appears colorless. Another example of additive colors is the image produced on a color television screen. A television screen consists of small luminous dots or pixels that glow either red, green, or blue when they are struck by electrons. See figure 19, so it's going to be right over here, figure 19. The invariant the brightness of different pixels in the different parts of the picture produces a picture that appears to have many colors present at the same time. Humans can see in the color because there are the three kinds of color receptors in the eye. Each receptor, called a cone cell, is sensitive to either red, green, or blue light. Light of different wavelengths stimulates a combination of these receptors so that a wide range of colors can be perceived. And here is figure 19. The brightness of the red, green, and blue pixels of a color television screen are adjusted such that, from a distance, all of the colors in a single picture appear. And here we have our additive and subtractive primary colors. I'm not going to read it to you, but um, I just want you guys to look at that. Let's see. There we go. That's better. Oh, whoops. Did it again. Subtractive primary colors filter out all light when combined. When blue light and yellow light are mixed, white light results. However, if you mix a blue pigment, such as paint or the color wax of a crayon, with a yellow pigment, and the resulting color is green, not white. The difference is due to the fact that pigments rely on color of light that are absorbed or subtracted from the incoming light. For example, yellow pigments subtract blue and violet colors, from a white light and reflects red, orange, yellow, and green light. Blue pigment subtracts red, orange, and yellow from the light and reflects green, blue, and violet. When yellow and blue pigments are combined, only green light is reflected. When pigments are mixed, each one subtracts a certain color from a white light, and the resulting color depends on frequencies that are not absorbed. The primary pigments, or primary subtractive colors, as they are sometimes called, are cyan, magenta, and yellow. These are the same colors that are complementary to the additive primary colors. See Table 6. When any two primary subtractive colors are combined, they produce either red, green, or blue pigments. When the three primary pigments are mixed together in proper proportions, all of the colors are subtracted from white light, and the mixture is black, and the mixture is black as shown in Figure 20. So let's read Figure 20. The combination of the subtractive primary colors by any two filters produces a complementary color of the third subtractive primary color. Combining yellow pigment and its complementary color, blue, should produce a black pigment. Yet earlier, blue and yellow were combined to produce green. The difference between these two situations is explained by the broad use of color names. The blue pigment that is added to a yellow pigment to produce green is not a pure blue. If it were, only blue light would be reflected from it. Similarly, a pure yellow pigment will reflect only yellow light. Because most pigments found in paints and dyes are combinations of different substances, they reflect light from nearby parts of the visible spectrum. Without knowledge of the light absorption characteristics of these pigments, it is hard to predict exactly what colors will